So anyway, you've seen all the stuff I got to do to the truck. So Josh, can you give me some pointers on what I need to do to repair all this stuff? Hey Jeff, AKA J Pay Dirt. Josh with the Adept Ape channel here. And it sounded like you wanted some advice on your cat engine. Well, I've worked on a couple cats over the years and uh, let's go into what you're looking at fixing on that. Maybe I can give you some pointers. So first thing is, looks like you're gonna be replacing your twin turbo setup and removing the pre-cooler. And you're wondering what that valve on the side of the pre-cooler is. Well, when Cat went to the twin turbos, they found, of course, the intake temps were increasing because you're compressing a lot more air, a lot more friction, a lot more heat. So the pre-cooler, which you probably already know, is just there to cool the air more before it goes to your charge air cooler. Well, the problem is if you're in a cold condition, especially if you're idling and you're pushing, say, 30 degree air through your pre-cooler, you could actually be cooling down your coolant to the point where you're keeping that engine colder than it should be. So that valve on the side is called a coolant diverter valve. And basically, if your engine's not warm enough, it's going to restrict or stop the coolant flow to the pre-cooler and then when the engine's warm it's going to allow the coolant flow to the pre-cooler if you're going to be removing the pre-cooler but you're not going to flash your ecm if you just leave that unplugged you're probably going to get a check engine light and that check engine light is going to be for coolant diverter valve current below or current above normal meaning that either you've shorted the wires or it's just an open if it's unplugged where you get a current below normal code so if you are going to disconnect the pre-cooler and not worry about doing anything with the ECM, well, in that case, you would want to leave the solenoid plugged in, um, maybe zip tie it to the side of the frame or something like that, um, or else you'll get a check engine light. So you got a bunch of other stuff going on there uh, that, of course, that main leak there you were looking at on the front structure, that's a big job. You'd have to pull the timing cover, all the gears, the backing plate, front motor mounts. Um, you know, if you can just kind of fix the smaller leaks like your front crank main, the fuel transfer pump, the air compressor, the power steering pump, that might get rid of most of those leaks. Um, I've seen a lot of guys, either Belzona, JB Weld, or Silicone, those timing gears, they usually keep leaking, um, unfortunately. Now, the other thing you were looking at that was leaking pretty bad was your valve cover base where your IVAs go, or VVAs. That's a pretty easy job. Um, if you're thinking of you know, most of the major repairs you seem to be pretty technical on, um, you're not going to have to really remove much off the overhead. Uh, you have to pull the valve covers, of course, and depending, I don't know which model engine this is, if it's a BXS, MXS, or NXS, serial number, but you'll need to remove, or I should say it would make it easier if you remove the IVA slash Jake housing. You can leave the rocker arms in place, and that'll give you a lot more room when you're pulling that valve cover base off. Now be careful because that sucker's full of oil for the IVAs. So you'll just have to undo the oil feed line on the back, bolts that hold it down, and then your injector harnesses. Look like your injector harnesses were leaking as well. It's not usually the seal in the injector harnesses that fails. It's actually oil that's getting pushed through the conduit in the wires and then it gets pushed into the plug. If when you unplug your injector harnesses, if there's oil inside, it's the harnesses that are saturated with oil and not the seal, in which case you'd have to replace your harnesses if you want to get rid of the oil problem there. Now, it looks like you might be thinking of doing that brake saver yourself. Uh, that's a big job. Obviously, you have to pull the tranny out. Uh, the brake saver's a mess. I really don't like them. Um, they really complicate the engine. Usually, you have a much bigger oil cooler. You have a bigger, heavier oil pump. You've got oil lines everywhere. Usually two oil filters increases the oil capacity. They leak a lot. They do work well, obviously, um, but they are a mess. Um, if you're thinking of doing that, you might wanna consider having a shop tackle that for you. That way, if it does leak after the fact, it'd be covered. But up to you, you seem pretty technical. Um, it's mostly just O-rings inside. Uh, there's nothing real fancy about it. Um, if, if you're comfortable with doing any sort of training work, you, you should be more than capable about doing the brake saver. 
All right, I hope that uh, kind of clarified a few things on there. Uh, if you have any other questions, of course, reach out to me. And thanks for reaching out to me. All right, this is Josh from the Adept Dave channel signing off. I want to thank the Adept Dave, Josh, for his help uh, and his advice. He works on these things all the time. So he's the go-to guy if you want to know about cat engines. Anyway, really appreciate it, Josh. Uh, I'm going to have some more questions for you. I know I am, but I really appreciate the help. I know the old stuff. I don't know the new stuff. So a guy's got to start somewhere. A lot of people say, how did I learn what I know? Well, from asking questions and watching other people, and that's the best kind of education you're going to get. So. Thanks, Josh. Okay, we gotta take this top radiator hose off. Jake's got the cover coming up. And he's got the C brake off. And I guess we don't have to pull any rocker arms or any of that stuff off to get this out. I don't know how we're gonna get those on the other side. Can you flip the back end up and tip it? Or what? And then bring it down. You know what's holding this up up here? You can't try to pass it. If I undo it on this side, it might, might give us enough room. It's just one tab. Where? This tab right here on the front. Let's hook it in there. Oh. Okay, put it in there. Barely. Well, we'll take a grinder to that, fix that shit, before it goes back in, eh? You know, you're stuck on the ACOs. Yeah. Ooh, you're running oil everywhere here. Might just set your end down here for a minute and let it run. It's coming out of those steels, isn't it? Let's pull that cork. Put it up farther. Let's see if it'll all come out. Okay, now do you have a piece of paper towel you can stuff in those two and then we can get it out of here? I'm gonna go lift the lid on the parts washer and just put it in there. It's like one big continuous sewer in here. And it's flat and hard as a rock. Well, it's not hard yet, but it just breaks. Well, now I'm wishing I'd have never tried to undo that line. I wonder if I try to tighten it again if it'll leak. Probably guaranteed, eh? Okay, I'm trying to get this oil off the engine. Um, right now I'm just spraying it with some soap that I use in my steam cleaner. These are the plugs. Plug these holes. And this one goes down here. I had this outside so I could steam clean it. 
I've got this as cleaned up the best I can. Um, if it wasn't in the shop and I didn't have the variable valve housing off, <clears throat> I would have taken the steam cleaner to it to finish this off, but I sprayed gunk engine degreaser on it. Then I sprayed my uh, steam cleaner soap and took a small wire brush to it to get the black off and the oil and I didn't get it all I just finally gave up there's just no way to clean this because it's such an unsmooth surface so I'm gonna call that good and uh, go from here um, the manifolds here just waiting on the turbo so Hopefully you're going to be watching this come Friday because it's, uh, I think it's Wednesday today. And I don't have anything edited and put together, so I might be up late. Okay, the manifolds here showed up at the neighbor's house. This is a full tilt performance manifold, comes with all the studs and uh, nuts and washers, uh, the uh, spacers, comes with everything, including a decal. And they pack this baby so there's no way that it can get destroyed. They double uh, they pack it in this foam, which is awesome. That way UPS can't break it. Anyway, she's nice. It's This is a polished ceramic coat inside and out. Okay, there we are, right there. And uh, this has got this has got bigger ports on it than the stock manifold. You saw those kind of cat eye ports. These are quite a bit larger. Now we'll take it. I'll go get the old one. We'll uh, put them side by side. Okay, so this is the standard factory C15 one here, and you can see the shape of these ports, and then this one, I don't know if there's more area there, I'll bet there is, quite a bit bigger, and then also, to really appreciate it, you gotta look at the exhaust port openings on it and uh, those are substantially bigger and Jim said I would need the bigger ports for his turbos to his turbo to really work the best let's have a look see and measure these inch thirty thousandths and the cat ones the factory is gonna be one point seven fifty so inch and a three quarter and two inch so they're bigger anyway I don't have the turbo here yet but I can get this on and get ready for it We're also working on the uh, 
the variable valve actuators. Um, okay, this is the variable valve actuator housing. And we've got all new uh, wiring harness that we've put in it. And that was quite a chore to get all that in. And uh, this is the gasket that you put in there. It's just a, a, a rectangular piece of rubber. The 3406s use this under their valve covers. I've seen that before. So you put it in and then on this end, this is where you, right here is where you're going to overlap it. And it's got a little pocket made for that. And then you put some silicone in there. And we'll do that uh, when we get ready to put it on. Just before we put it on, we'll put some silicone in there and some on this side just to guarantee that it's not going to leak between these, but these are actually a pretty daggone tight fit between each other, so um, there was a little bit of silicone in there when we took it apart. I don't know if this has ever been off before or not. The actual variable valve actuators themselves, and I don't totally understand what they do. I've been reading the service manual. Apparently what they do is is it opens the intake valve but I don't really know exactly how it functions I have no clue so I need somebody to explain to me I, I know it's an emissions thing and it has to do with the ACERT but other than that I don't have a clue what they do but this is also a variable valve actuator for a Jake brake model and when I bought this truck it didn't have actually this is Caterpillar's brake it's called a C brake and in order to put the C brake on you basically have to change out the variable valve actuators so to have purchased this new from Cat it was like four thousand dollars but I think the company I got it from was called Midwest Diesel. I think they're in Minnesota. But I called them and they have a lot of cat stuff, surplus, different things. They do a lot of exporting. And so he just happened to have a bunch of C15 VVAs that were Jake break ready. And so I bought these. Uh, I think I paid about fifteen or eighteen hundred dollars for all three of them, and then I returned my own my old VVAs back to him. And these were brand new, straight from the factory. Cat uh, variable valve actuators with the C brake on them. So uh, I love them because between the C brake and the retarder. Uh, they're in a grade that I can't go down. I will never touch the brakes uh, between the retarder and the C brake. It really puts down a lot of horsepower. Anyway, I was going to show you. This is the uh, this is the piece of rubber that goes in the uh, cover over there. That's a chunk that's left over. And uh, this was a pretty cool idea by Cat. Um, one of the things we found is that this, on the side with the turbos, it was completely flat and mashed over. And the heat, I think, had got to it. The bolts were all loose on that side, which was probably helping it leak. But uh, hopefully getting rid of the twins is going to reduce a lot of heat in there. And uh, I'm excited to put this on and see how it works. Okay, this is the exhaust manifold that I'm shipping to Tim in Tennessee for his 1693. This is a used one. It's in good shape. No cracks, Tim. Anyway, what I thought I'd do is I bolted it to some 7 16ths OSB on the bottom, and I'm putting a piece on top to protect the top flanges. And then I'll just put washers on them and nuts. And then I'm going to take some cardboard and wrap it good 
to protect the rest of it anyway. It should make it to you in good shape, Tim. Okay, Tim. There's the manifold packaged up. I put uh, bubble plastic in on the top. It's bolted to plywood. It's got a plywood piece on top to protect the flanges. Taped the crap out of it. And I'm hoping UPS cannot damage that. want to give a shout out to some subscribers today. Tom Gross. Happy birthday, Tom. He's from North Clark County, Washington. His brother Bill told me to wish him a happy birthday. I hope you have a really good birthday this Friday, Tom. JC Smith Projects from Ohio. That's his YouTube channel name. Go check him out. Woos31. He works in Oregon and I'm pretty sure he works for a County Highway District. Uh, Mike McCoy from Western North Carolina. M Mike has a sawmill. Go check out his channel. It's just Mike McCoy. You know, Mike, you and I might need to do some business on Old Kenny when I get ready to put a floor in, or I might need a hardwood floor. Uh, Gary Savage from Kent over in the UK. Thanks, Gary. Ken Arnold. He's from Newfoundland, Canada. And Mitchell Harvey, he's from the oil fields of northern BC in Canada. Thank you to my Canadian subscribers. I hope you enjoyed the salute I gave you at the very first of the video. If you didn't see that, go clear back and pause it and stare for a while. You're going to like that. Dean Crichton from North New Zealand, glad to have you, mate. He's a Kiwi. <laughs> hope that's not derogatory. Uh, Chris from Perth, Australia. Thanks for watching. And uh, next episode, we're installing the Blaylock on the C15. It's Switchblade Turbo Time. <laughs>this toolbox awesome you got a place to put your wrenches here your it's color-coded so all your yellow all your yellow ones are American and all your black ones are going to be metric and then this drawer this drawer pulls out and you can stick your chargers and and it's got a hole in the back to run your cord so you can charge your batteries for your tools and then you've got a whole bunch of drawers down below. These, are, This one's pretty cool. Let me show you this one. This one's got uh, little squares, things you could put, you know. We could basically make a bolt bin out of this or fittings, whatever. That's pretty cool. And they came with the rubber mat in them. And I had it painted. Cat Yeller. So, this is the lid for it. There you go. Stay tuned next week. I'll tell you some more about it and where I got it.